we previously talked about Alex O'Connor's interview with Jordan Peterson and the potential for the skewing perspective that becoming a bigger influencer type figure pundit can bring, right? Because he was talking about taking a dialogue approach as opposed to a combative, you know, approach to entering into discussion. And we previously talked about like the potential issues, the trade-offs that you make there in doing that, you know, being more indulgent and avoiding certain topics that might cause more controversy and whatnot. But another aspect of that conversation, which I do think needs to be acknowledged and which was productive is that Alex wanted to pin Jordan down a little bit on his stance about religion and Christianity and in particular the resurrection. And he really had to go to quite a lot of lengths to try and get Jordan to address the topic. So I'm going to play an example of Jordan being his obfuscating self. Now, Christ, now there's a claim that, that is attributed to Christ that he is the embodiment or the incarnation, the fulfillment, let's say, of the prophet and the laws. Yes. I think that's true. Uh-huh. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, you know, what did, I think it's in the Gospel of John. I think Gospel of John closes with a statement that something like, if all the books that were ever yes. written were written about the Gospel accounts, that wouldn't be enough books to explain what had happened. Yeah, if, if we like, could, if yes. all the things that Jesus did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's, there's, a, there's a truth in that. The truth is that profound religious account is bottomless. Mm-hmm. And the biblical representations are like that. There's no limit to the amount of investigation they can bear, not least because the text itself is deeply cross-referenced. So there's like, there's an innumerable number of paths through it. It's like a chessboard. And so it's it's inexhaustible in its interpretive space. That's true. And and that's a problem too, because it it means it's also susceptible to multiple interpretations, including potentially competing interpretations. So this is in relation to a question about whether he believes in... Christ was yeah. resurrected from the dead. Yeah. And you, you do hear echoes of Zizek a little bit there, right? That mm-hmm. there's endless possible interpretations. The interpretive space is, you mm-hmm. know, endless for text. Some people mentioned that in, in response to us commenting, on, you know, a shark, you can make mm-hmm. endless. What does the shark stand for? On the one hand, some critics claim that obviously the shark stands for the foreign threat to ordinary Americans. The shark is a metaphor for natural disaster, storms, or immigrants threatening the United States. On the other hand, it's interesting to know that Fidel Castro, who loves the film, once said that for him, Joss is kind of a leftist, Marxist film, and that the shark is a metaphor for brutal, big capital exploiting ordinary Americans. So which is the right answer? None of them and at the same time, all of them. Why am I mentioning this? Just to be clear, I agree. Humans can do that. They can (laughs) waffle endlessly about almost anything. You could write (laughs) dissertations on the imagery in Peppa Pig if you (laughs) wanted to. Or, Or Peppa Pig's metaphorical analogous structure to the Jataka tales of Buddhism, right? Like- there you go. Any aspiring humanities PhDs, Chris has got a topic for you. If you're struggling for one, that'll work. Right. Yeah. What What exactly is the ontological status of the human queen in Peppa Pig when everyone else in the show is an animal and the queen is the only human? Explain it, right? Like, make it be, look at, let's look at the ontological assumptions there. Is there multiverses? Has the queen slipped into... <laughs> You know, the, the Peppa Pig verse, is she, mm. is this a dystopian future for her? These are all questions that one could ask, Matt. One could ask these questions. Yeah, you might well ask whether or not she, you know, whether it's a commentary on class struggle and power dynamics. Daddy Pig, he's working all the time, but does he ever raise in a position? Like, and do people age? It's almost a meta commentary on, you know, the <laughs> futility of work and the, the alienation from the mode of production. But set that aside. So Peterson's right in that people really can interpret. This is the beauty of our species and the horror. <laughs> we, <laughs> we can go on such interpretive flights of fancy, but he regards it as like a specific property 
of the biblical of the, text. the Bible. Yes, the biblical, not, not all texts, because that would be postmodernism and therefore bad. But the biblical text, that's a special one that does permit a multiplicity of interacting fractal like interpretations spawning off into infinity. That's cool. Yeah. And sometimes he will then follow that up by saying that, like, but this doesn't mean that every interpretation is equal because of, you know, evolution and these kind of things. So he tries to, you know, like make an appeal to some criteria, but it's very hand wavy what he does, which, and it's essentially to say that his interpretation is better than the alternatives, right? So there was loads of this. There was, you know, 40 minutes of him constantly doing this over and over. But Alex did manage through persistence and politeness to set things up and then get to a question where he eventually got Peterson to admit something which he hasn't before, right? So first of all, here is the setup. I think a lot of people interpret Paul, for example, um, uh, the earliest New Testament source, as saying that if Jesus did not literally rise from the dead, Mm -hmm. if if there was not a man who stopped breathing and then started breathing again, then your faith is futile and you're still Mm -hmm. in your sins. That is, Christianity is undermined. Mm -hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. that means that, and Paul doesn't say sort of believing that that's false is really bad. He says, if you do not believe this proactively, yeah. then your faith is, yeah, is futile. Yeah, the problem so, I so have with if, that. If you don't proactively yeah. believe that yourself, then I think when a Christian asks you, you know, do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus? Are you a Christian? I think you must be committed to saying no, at least under that interpretation of Paul. Mm-hmm. And, and, and even if you're not sure, I mean, it's fine if, if I say to you, do you think that a man physically rose from the dead? And you say something like, well, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there but mm-hmm. I think it has a lot of mythological significance, or I think that maybe it, it happened in a, in a different sense, or it happened in the sense that good fiction happens, you mm-hmm. know, then fine. But it needs to begin with that caveat of, of the simple sort mm-hmm. of, historically speaking, I don't know. And I know you don't like to pull out the historical well, oh, Jesus well, that, and the mythological, that's a, that's but, a good objection. but it's, it's an a, important question to a, ask. No, of course, it's a very good objection. Mm. Well, good job there, right? Yeah, that is something that I would imagine that various Christian figures would are. say. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he does a good job by like kind of preempting that Jordan's going to say, you know, the historical and mythological can't be mm-hmm. taken apart and all this. So this was the setup, Matt. And this was the question that Peterson was got with, which I, I, I was impressed by this. When you say you believe the accounts, do you mean, and, and I, I hate to be sort of yeah. pedantic here, it seems pedantic, but do you mean you believe that these are things that happened such that if I, if that's, now, that's a strange I know you don't state. like that. Let me put it this way. Yeah. If, if I went back in time with a Panasonic video camera and put that camera in front of the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, would the little LCD screen show a man walk out of that tomb? I would suspect yes. So that, that, is, that to me seems like a belief in the historical event of the resurrection, or at least of Jesus leaving the tomb, which means that when somebody says, you know, do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? It doesn't seem clear to me why you're not able to just say, it would seem to me yes. Because I have no idea what that means. And neither did the people who saw it. You know, like he then tried to walk it back, right? That he doesn't really know what it means. But like Alex did, uh, I, I kind of appreciate it because he, you know, he added the details that were mm. like, yeah. so on the little camera screen, would yeah. a man yeah. appear on that image that, you know, like, and yeah. that allowed Jordan to be kind of like, Okay, with all of those things, like, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Then he immediately yeah. tries to obfuscate, but yeah. yeah. Because if he'd use any other words, like, do you believe that that, mm. that he rose from the dead? He'd go, well, that depends what you mean by belief, right? But he can't go, yeah. that depends what you mean by an LCD camera. <laughs> it doesn't exactly. work as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, look, Jordan, Jordan actually gets into more difficulty with the bona fide Christians than he does with leftists and work people and academics and so on, doesn't he? Does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> I've, I've seen so many articles written by pastors or reverends in some Christian bulletin or something like that having a go at Jordan Peterson because he's like a metaphorical, allegorical, metaphysical Christian rather than a proper one. So he doesn't speak, at least if they feel that he doesn't speak for them. You can see potentially why people have been trying to get Jordan, to pin Jordan Peterson on this point for years, right? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's never directly answered the question. Right. And this is, a, this is an answer. Now, yes, he immediately walks it back. I'm sure it doesn't actually matter, right? It doesn't really matter 
what Jordan Peterson specifically means, but just the fact that somebody got him to actually answer the question. Know, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the achievement. So Alex deserves credit for that. Uh, good job. Alex. Mm. So that's the flip side of being indulgent because he was so, you know, considerate and polite and whatnot. That's what allowed Jordan to answer. Was it worth it? (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's a question there, but nonetheless. I'm not sure it was worth it. I, for one, do not care (laughs) what Jordan feels about that event. But if you cared, this would be you know, a clarification. He's admitted, and it's absolutely fine. You think Jesus rose from the dead? Fine. Welcome to the same realm as millions and billions of Christians around the world, right? Like it's, it's not, it doesn't make you special or it's not something, you know, mystical that nobody has ever heard of. Yes, fine. You have religious belief. That's it. The, you know, why that take you so long <laughs> to, to, to work out? So, you know, fine. And if you don't believe evil from death, that's fine too. You don't have to, right? Like mm. it's, it's not, shouldn't be this thing which requires thousands of hours of obfuscation to just like avoid but it it is because jordan peterson is a tortured soul so you know everything has to be like that well it makes sense to me i don't think he i don't think he really does believe not in the sense of one of those like a like a serious like born again christian um i think he he is a jungian freudian metaphysical cultural christian um he loves all the trappings and he loves the sort of moral basis of it but i don't think he does but he, he doesn't want to sort of own that position either because it's it's kind of a weak position to not be a proper christian almost all the people that i've seen waxing lyrical about you know the the kind of christian tradition and the importance to consider ritual and you know that people really they're missing these you know fundamental aspects in their life and all that. almost all of them haven't grown up religious if you were raised like like i was raised catholic and went to mass every week there's no hidden secret world of you know oh i've never considered that i've met religious people my whole life people who believe in the bible people who don't people you know they're all going to church they're there's all doing different things and there's people that are into christian mystics or not or you know they're they join uh like priesthoods or they become monk monks or whatever the or nuns, whatever the case might be. And it isn't this fantastical, you know, mystical realm of complex psychological interpretations and imagery. It is just, there are people in the world that are religion, there are religious traditions, there's stuff in religious traditions that is boring as, is, as hell. And a lot of it rests on supernatural claims and, and the theological claims. It just, it isn't such a, fantastical mystery that nobody's ever considered if you are somebody that has like been raised in a a culture where religion exists so i think that part of it is an epiphenom of the people themselves coming across this stuff later and regarding it as very esoteric and you know they never were aware of the beauty of the christian tradition and you're like yeah, all right. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing about Russell Brand with his his publicizing his his newfound appreciation for Christianity and his spiritual journey, and it's this exotic yeah. <laughs> thing that he's embarking on. I don't think he'd ever actually go to church or do any of the boring things that run of the mill Christians do, but the journey he's on is so epic, and I guess it's appealing to people. That- I think he is going to church, but it's just layered all that. Well, I don't know. At least he's making, you know, an initial <laughs> effort. Let's see in one year's time. <laughs> the, <laughs> like, I, but the whole point about it is, you know, my my lack of faith in, in Christianity is well documented. But, you know, one of the things I do recall is that you're not really supposed to publicize your great works and your spiritual achievements and whatnot, because those people have already received a reward on earth by, you know, the person who gives and doesn't make a show of it. That's supposed to be the thing. But Russell Brand absolutely has made a show (laughs) of, you know, his Christian conversion. He doesn't doesn't have the right temperament for Christianity, I feel. It's not really in his nature. Evangelical Christianity, fine. Like evangelical Mm -hmm. American style megachurch Christianity, but like Church of England style (laughs) or, you know, Irish Catholicism. No, 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 not not interesting enough. So that's the way it is, Matt. And like, you know, last thing I'll say is I've been to 
Barcelona, right? And seeing the Sagrada Familia. What a beautiful architectural mm. wonder, the mind of, uh, what do you call the architect? Gaudi, right? Who, Gaudi. Mm. Who did that, right? But, but I, I love shrines and temples all around Japan. And there are beautiful buildings, beautiful elements of culture that come from religious mm. traditions and, and devotion and all that. Do you like the sound of church bells, Chris? No, yeah, I don't like them <laughs> that much, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not a fan. But, but the thing is, there's plenty, the, the, you know, culture, human culture is interesting and we can make profound and beautiful things, but it also comes through literature. It also comes from science and all these different things. So marking out Christianity or religion as like this fundamentally different thing that needs to be regarded as this, you know, beautiful pearl that nothing else can be compared mm. to. It's just yeah, it's like it's exceptionalist and exoticism and all that kind of thing. And it doesn't mean that you have to be this kind of hard-nosed reductionist person saying, oh, I hate all church yeah. buildings. And, yeah, you know, we should, you don't pull, have we should like pull those cathedrals and so on. No, no, of yeah. course not. No. But you don't no. have, the, the alternative doesn't have to be the indulgent waffles of Peterson and Brand. Surely there's another <laughs> path that we can all take. I think we can all agree with you there.